Hi, I'm Commander Mark, and this is the Secret City, a place of fun and fantasy and adventure. On this program, I'll show you how to draw in three dimensions using an important word, alignment. First, we'll draw a simple pencil to show you alignment in direction one, and then we'll draw another pencil, a bigger pencil, pointing in direction seven. Later, we'll use alignment to add a platform for our space station on the Secret City mural. Zevtron's here today, and he'll help me demonstrate two-point perspective. I'll show you how to draw a building looking up and looking down at the same time. Now, I know you want to become a member of the Secret City Club, so Zevtron will tell you how easy it is to join. Here's what you need to follow along today. You need your drawing pad, your drawing pencil, your activity notebook, so you can take some notes on how to draw your own two-point perspective. Now, you gather those materials together, I'll be right back. Direction seven and direction one, alignment. That's the important word we're gonna learn today is alignment. You have your pencil ready, right? You have some paper in front of you and you're all fueled up and you're ready to blast across that piece of paper and draw in three dimensions using alignment. Now you've drawn these lines quite often before, but you didn't know they were direction one and seven. So today I'll point it out to you. Let's warm up, we'll draw a simple table and we'll use direction one and seven. You know how to do the two dots already. Finger in the middle, a dot above and below your finger. All right, look it. Direction seven, direction one, direction seven. Notice how all these lines line up with our first direction seven line, you see? Direction one. This is kind of like our secret city code. Once you understand direction one and direction seven, when, I'm, when I say draw a line in direction one, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about and you probably won't even have to see what I'm drawing. Okay, nice, loose, sketchy drawing. Get comfortable, get warmed up. Get your confidence level up so when we draw those pencils going off, or heading toward direction one and heading toward direction seven, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Direction seven and direction one. Add some shading over here. Now, what line is this in? What's that line? Direction what? Direction one, okay, now what line is this line in? Same thing, right? Direction one, I couldn't fool you, right? I'll make it straighter. All right, how about, let me see, how about this line? Yeah, you can draw these lines with me as long as you understand what direction they're in. This is a vertical line. And then what direction is this line in right here? Direction seven. All right, so let's use those directions and we'll make a nice, really simple drawing to start with and then we'll make it a little more elaborate with some shading and some contour lines. So start, we'll make a, let's say a direction seven pencil heading toward direction seven. Draw a four shortened circle, kind of open at the end. A guideline going in direction seven. And then, again, using that magic word, we already talked about it, size. This is larger and gets smaller as it goes away from you. Now, see how easy it is when you understand direction seven? You just know it's going off to the northwest, going off to the left. Curve the end. Now, an imaginary line, an imaginary line right down the center, put a dot. You have that imaginary line? You have a dot. That's going to be your pencil lid. That's right where these two points come off the end, and they come down to that point. Pencils are a really good exercise to practice, and you can do these anytime. You know, if you have some spare time, if you're talking on the phone or you're sitting at the kitchen table with nothing to do, you can practice drawing simple tables or these pencils and using those directions. Draw the contour lines, even the contour lines wrap in direction seven. Leave a reflection at the top. Remember that nice little trick I showed you? How to make it look a little more interesting. And then we'll add shading underneath and blend it lighter as it goes up. Well, actually, it's, I'm drawing almost in a, like a negative of a photograph. I'm drawing in white, so it's a real light underneath here. And I'll get darker as I move up. This will represent the shading, though. And then we'll put a pencil lid at the end right here. And there's our first drawing of a pencil going off in direction seven. Now, let's turn the direction of the pencil and make it go 
What direction is the other way? 19? <laughs> no, it's direction 1. A four shortened circle, open circle, really loose. It's real sketchy, and you can have fun with your pencil. You don't have to get too worried or too stressed out when you're drawing. Relax, take a deep breath, let your pencil fly across that paper. You're confident, right? A guideline. Make sure this curves. There is a picture of Commander Mark. I did not know it existed. I did not know there was everyone like it. It must be a self-portrait. That is very interesting. I could be very wrong, but I am sure the commander was in a different position. Septron! Oh, commander, <laughs> it is you. <laughs> you look like you are in a fish tank. I'm not in a fish tank. I'm drawing on glass today. Kind of interesting effect on the other side, isn't it? This is very interesting, commander. What are you doing? I'm using alignment. Alignment? It's not what you do to your spaceship. <laughs> when you align up your, your spaceship, look at this. This is direction one. This is direction seven. Direction one and seven. Mm -hmm. Does your spaceship have wheels on it? That was a joke. I made an alignment about lining up your wheels on your spaceship, but I forgot if you had wheels or not on your spaceship. It does have wheels, Commander. <laughs> OK, so you, but you didn't chuckle. I guess that was a bad joke, huh? I am very involved in your drawing and in your lines. Look at this. The contour lines wrap around. Even, even the contour lines go in direction one. See how they line up going away or going toward that direction one horizon back there. I'll leave a reflection at the top. See, these are really fun to draw. Nice and see the band how it wraps around right here? And then look at this, the shading. Commander. Dark underneath gets lighter as it moves up. It is very interesting, but I must go on an errand for my mother. <laughs> see you later, Zevtron. Dark underneath here. And it gets a little bit lighter as it moves up. And now I'll use the guideline of direction one and direction seven. Here's direction one. See the guideline, the cast shadow right here on the ground? Now watch this. As soon as the cast shadow hits this point, it leaves the pencil and it lies across the ground. See how it picks that pencil lid off the ground? Direction one's the same thing. I'll put the lead back here, a little round dot. I mean direction seven. See, sometimes you get confused. But make sure you, direction seven. Direction one. Direction seven's lining across here. Direction seven. Direction seven hits the point. Now watch this. It leaves the pencil and it lies along the ground. Look at that. Makes the pencil lid pop up off the ground, doesn't it? Now let's do this one more time. What line is this direction right here? What is that? Direction seven. Okay, what line is this line? Direction one. Go ahead with your pencil and draw six Direction seven lines. Ah, you caught me, I only did five. Now, draw six. One, two, three, four, five, six direction one lines. Good exercise to practice. Draw those as much as you can. Now, if you want to, you can stack a simple table using direction seven and direction one. I'll do it really quickly. You know how to do this by heart. Try to, why I'm doing it, try to estimate what directions I'm using right here. OK, alignment. Remember alignment. Practice your drawing. Draw, draw, draw. Keep in your mind direction one, direction seven, and draw 20 or 30 minutes a day. My mother is very happy that I am learning how to draw. She is happy because I am happy. I am happy because I am a member of the Secret City Club. 
Commander Mark is happy too. He would be even happier if everyone learned how to draw and joined the club. You can join. All you need to do is to send a drawing to the commander. This week's drawing assignment is to draw a transportation system for the underground planet. A transportation system is a rocket ship or is a flying saucer or a space shuttle or a fugal flag. Here are some examples from Earth. This is a drawing by Bruce. It is a skateboard park. It reminds me of a roller coaster. Look at all the loop-de-loops and ups and downs. I like it very much. This is a drawing by John Treyer. Look at all the shading. He must have chuckled a great deal. And look, it has two-point perspective. I must tell the commander about it. Hey, kids. Send your drawings to me, Commander Mark, and I'll send you a free Secret City Club card. Send your drawings to Commander Mark Kistler, P.O. Box 478, Oceanside, California, 92054. Two-point perspective is really fascinating, and I want to explain a little bit about how to make your own vanishing point or your own two-point perspective. Now, what I've done, I've taken a really giant piece of cardboard, two tacks, I put a tack in this side of the cardboard, horizontally straight across, I put another tack into the cardboard. I took five rubber bands, one, two, three, four, five, I tied them together, and I created an artificial horizon line going through my drawing. Now, take a close look at the drawing, and you see that I use direction one and direction seven, the two-point vanishing point system. Look it. I'll lower the rubber band. You see direction. What direction is that? Direction seven. Look over here on this side. You see how the bottom of these wedges are in direction what? Direction one. Now look at this. It changes direction as you move the rubber band upward. You see how the building gets smaller and it vanishes into the vanishing point. See this building over here? See how it all lines up coming back to our tack. So I want to draw another drawing. I have some tape here, and I want you to try doing something like this when you have a chance at home. I have some paper. I'm going to put another piece of paper right over this piece of cardboard, and we'll do a drawing together so you can take some notes of what I'm doing. I'll take my tape, and I'll carefully tape down a section here and a section here. Now, start by drawing some vertical lines. You can draw as many as you want. I'll draw the, Now, vertical lines are lines that line up with the side of your paper. I'll just draw a bunch of them. We'll turn these into buildings eventually. I'll make this one taller. Now, I'll start with this middle vertical line, and somehow we'll make these into skyscrapers in a city using our rubber band, our two-point perspective. Now, let's line up the top of one of these lines with the vanishing point. You line up and you put a dark line, get an idea of where that line is, and then you darken it in and connect it. Now, let's draw the other side of the building. You're looking up at the building. You could even draw maybe a simple table, looking up at a simple table. And then I'll draw the top of the simple table overhanging. See, when you look up at a simple table, you see the overhang coming across. See, if you look at a simple table that you usually draw, have drawn, you look down at the top, but now we're gonna be looking up at it. We'll use our guide point, our vanishing point system, the rubber band. See, this is really cheap to make. You just have to find some rubber bands and maybe the back of a packing crate or something, a cardboard crate, and then you have your own vanishing point system. Line up the top really lightly sketch it in, then you can go back in and darken it in later. And look at this. You have the top of a simple table. Now let's make this line continue down. We'll make the bottom of a simple table. Underneath the simple table. Line it up. It's kind of fun. You can play music on here too if you want. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I'm not going to chuckle yet. I haven't started shading. When I shade, that's when I start to chuckle. And then I'll line it up this and direction. What direction is that again? We, we learn those two direction lines today. This line right here is direction seven, and this is direction one, and then we'll draw the bottom of the simple table. Now see, look at you're standing here at the building, and you're looking up at it, and you're looking down at it at the same time. Your horizon line and your two-point perspective, your vanishing point system helps establish that. Now we'll draw really quick buildings. I'll make this line come up higher. We'll draw the end of that building. Draw the end of this building. And this will be just a simple building to show you 
how to make it look like it's lower in the paper. Commander Mark, Commander Mark. Eyes up, John. I have an example. Two point perspective, John Traer. He really had this under control. I'm gonna put this on here and see if this works. Okay, if you can hold that for me, Zebtron. Wait, move it up just a bit. Now, let's see it. I'll move the rubber band and it doesn't match up. Do you know why it doesn't match up, Zebtron? No, I do not. Because he took his vanishing points, instead of having them way stretched out to the side like I do, he moved them into the paper and me use my ruler and I'll establish where, I'll undo this, I'll, I'll hook that up later. We'll establish right where his vanishing point system is. Here's his line. I'll line it up. I'll come off. I won't draw on his drawing. I don't want to ruin his good artwork. We'll line up all these others. See right there, that, that's his one point. All these lines come down to that vanishing point. Now we'll line this system up over here. We'll figure out exactly where his vanishing point. Now see, I'm lining this up with this line right here. Make sure it's steady, Zebtron. This is serious stuff here. OK, wait, I'd have to redo this because it moved just a bit. A new line. And then we'll line up the top. And there's right there. That's his vanishing point system. See, he brought it really close in. Now, it looks like you're looking through a fishbowl or some kind of distorted camera lens because it brings it in. If you stretch out the vanishing points, I'll move this a little bit. It looks a little more natural. Take a look at this one, Zebtron. You see that drawing? See how I put the vanishing points way out on the side? Yes. And it makes it look a little more natural. Oh, Commander, I want to go practice my vanishing points. <laughs> OK. Oh, you want to take the drawing with you? Yes, I do. All right, Zebtron. See you later. I want to show you one more drawing. It's called a one-point perspective. Now, let's try this one. You don't have to have a ruler. I have my tape here. Well. My tape doesn't want to work today, so I'll just use this little area. Now, draw a square. We'll pretend we're inside of a room right in this area. We'll put a dot right in the middle. Now, this is going to be in like a living room or a cabin or what kind of room would you like inside of a recreation room. The roof comes down toward this one dot right here. The floorboards go up toward this one dot. And then we'll draw the back of the room down here, another square, horizontally across the paper. Every line right here comes toward this middle dot. And I'm going to move the dot down just a bit, and I'll make, I'll make it a star. We'll make some ceiling tiles or some beams coming down here, vertical lines. And they all come down toward the dot. You see how everything comes toward this middle dot? It's called one-point perspective. And then if you want to draw floorboards, we'll draw a window. Everything comes toward that dot. And there you have, looking into a room, one point perspective. I have some pictures I would like to show you. This picture here is by Jesse. It is a, of a inhabitant. The inhabitant is waving at Zeptron. Hello. There is also a flying vehicle. I believe it is a flying saucer. The next drawing. is by a girl named Kelly. She is from Arizona. This is also an inhabitant, a very smiling inhabitant, a very pretty picture. This is a very intricate picture of the secret city. Notice all of the ramps and the levels and the towers and a waving flag. It is by Eric Hoffman. It is also very nice. <laughs> this picture is by Betsy. It is an inhabitant of the moonscape. It has funny bold legs and it has an opening in its belly. It also has waving hands. It has a very strange head. I like it very much, Betsy. The Secret City mural is really beginning to take shape now. Look at this. We have our Secret City planet, and we have the underplanet started, and then we have Unibear Island, and <laughs> the cute little Unibears with the unicorn horns, and then we have our water system for the underplanet. We have our space station. We have our flying saucer fleet. We need to have some place where the flying saucers can park and land their flying saucers, right? So I've penciled, penciled in a, the basic platform for the space station, the floating gravity space station. So let me see. I'll try to follow this idea. I'm leaving a scoop in here. Now, remember the, what the alignment words are today, right? Direction 1, direction 1, and direction 7. See, I'm using direction 1 and 7 here quite a bit. Here's direction 1. 
going up to the right. Vertical line. And then the bottom of the space station going up in direction one. A vertical line. Direction one. A four shortened circle. And then I'll curve the bottom. This is the anti-gravity device here. And later we'll add, attach some kind of fancy system to keep this floating platform. This is really a, a, an enormous platform. It doesn't really look that huge to you, but you wait till I draw the flying saucers. There'll be little tiny specks. You'll barely be able to see them because this space station is just so enormous. It's like a giant planet all by itself. And then I'll draw direction seven, right? Remember that? You, you probably noticed that immediately as soon as I drew it. You thought to yourself, that's a direction seven line, huh? <laughs> I knew you were keeping on your toes. Curve the bottom of any round cylinder shapes. Make sure you curve the bottom a lot. And then, do you remember how I shade on a curved surface? It's a blended shading, nice and dark. And I think I'm going to shade on curved surface. This will be, let me see, uh, cross hatching. Instead of just the scribble technique, I'll pursue a cross hatching technique for the this side and over here, nice and dark. Very neat shading. And then I'll put some kind of elaborate communication system up on top here. A direction one, direction seven, vertical, direction one. And then I want to draw a direction seven tube coming out of here. So I'm going to take my pen. I'm going to line this up and make sure these lines all line up. This gets tricky. And then a four shortened circle at the end of the tube. Direction one. Curve the end. See how it just sticks right into the side if you curve it? Now, if you came straight down, it would look like this tube's ready to fall right off the side. So make sure you curve it a lot. And if you want to make it even more interesting, you could put a really tiny four shortened ring around that curve to make it look like it's really stuck to the side of that building. I'll do the same thing over here. Very detailed foreshortened ring. And then direction one, a vertical line. And then I'll draw the back of that. Here's the dot here. And that's the far dot of your foreshortened square. There we go. Here's a little test for you. Do you remember the magic word that I've used for the top, for the top, and for the top there. Remember? Let's see if Elmo can help refresh your memory. Did you get it? <laughs> okay. Almost pretty cute little fellow. Turn the end back here, direction seven and direction one. This is a good practice exercise. If you have your piece of paper with you, you can draw a foreshortened square, put the thickness on it, and then try to draw a small tube coming out in each direction of each side of that square. And you have a really nice practice exercise. Now, I added this layer down here, a little attachment tube to put the vacuum. This would be a vacuum chamber, just like Zebtron added to his floating environment when he was building it. He gave me a good idea for the vacuum transportation floating environment there. Now put a dot below the center, and I'll draw another four shortened square. OK. Turn it around the corner here. Try to keep these lined up. I'll go in later and clean this up just a bit with my shading. Now, we added that. Now I want to add some shading. The cross hatching, I'm going to be consistent throughout the whole drawing. You know, there's an artist who uses beautiful cross hatching in his drawings and his shadings. His name is Ashley Bryant. And, well, there's another one too. Um, MC Escher uses beautiful cross hatching. He uses direction one and seven a lot. He uses a lot of alignment, MC Escher. So if you want to look up some alignment exercises, those are some artists to check out. I'll use cross hatching up along here. Our space station, our floating space station. This will add a little bit of 
energy and excitement to our secret city galaxy up here. We not only have creatures and creations and, and buildings on the planet, but we also have them floating above the planet and out in outer space on the moon. And I'll add cross hatching underneath here. Isn't this fun? Are you doing this with your school yet? Did you get your friends together? Are you doing your own secret city mural? I guarantee if you do, it'll be really fun. And then I'll add, let me see, add the shading on the left side over here. When you cross hatch, try not coming straight down. Well, you can do that if you want and put a checker, a plaid checker to, uh, style, but right now I'm just going diagonally. And I'm going diagonally over here. See what happens? Diagonal lines cross hatching. Use alignment a lot. Shade your drawings, use foreshortening. Draw about 20 or 30 minutes a day, and I'll see you next time. You can learn more about drawing in 3D by ordering Commander Mark's animated home video called Mark Kistler's Draw Squad. To order this one-hour instructional tape, send check or money order for $19.95 to Commander Mark's Video, P.O. Box 478, Oceanside, California, 92054.